If you're looking for a budget-friendly AI video upscaler, then today I'm going to explore the video upscaler by Nero. In the past, Nero have been known for their awesome burning software that comes with burning CDs and DVDs, but have also always had some additional tools for when you're burning video or audio to disc. So today I'm gonna to show you how it works, compare some of the results, and even compare it against its main competitor, Topaz Video AI. Now, once you have the program open, I can drag in a video and start working within the interface. Now, one of the cool things I want to point out quickly is that it actually optimized itself for my graphics card, which I thought was a nice touch. But otherwise, we have our original video over here and we can render a preview. But first, we want to explore some of the settings. So I have upscale options here. At a glance, you can see we have a model, the size, frame rate, but also some adjustments. So I can adjust things like the brightness or the contrast if I want to change that in the video as well. Sometimes you don't quite get the color you want within a video, so this can be a great way to crank up the color improve the sharpness, and actually have a little bit more control over the output result. So cooling that down doesn't look too bad. Warming it up is a bit too much, so I can play with that tint. So I'm gonna leave all that the way it is, but otherwise we're gonna come back to upscale options because we wanna choose a different model. You'll see here it has animation selected, but this is more like a real life footage, even though it's AI generated. But when I go to the animation dropdown or where it says select AI model, we have a fast model, which is built for fast processing. We have animation, realistic, which we're gonna go with, versatile, which is a little bit more flexible, and face enhancement. So we're gonna start, we're gonna try realistic and then face enhancement. We're gonna come back and try some of these other uh, models here later. But otherwise, we'll start with realistic. And I wanna upscale this to 4K, so I'm gonna go 3840 by 2160. The frame rate here is 25. I'm gonna use frame interpolation to bring that up to 30 frames a second so things look a little bit smoother. Now on top of that, if I do frame interpolation, we have an option here for scene detection. If I tick that, basically what it does, it looks for cuts. So if you have different angles cut into the video, scene detection will actually try to uh, recognize that and not generate a frame in between so you get a nice clean cut between scenes. So we can add slow motion. So we're actually going to go with 2X on this one we're gonna sync audio and preserve the pitch, even though there's no audio in this video, but that means you can either preserve the pitch or you can sync the audio, so if it slows down, you get that deeper sound. So there's a few options in here already that I haven't seen in Topaz Video AI. So I've got the location I want to output the video to. So with all these settings, before I hit upscale, and come over here and hit preview three seconds, or I can change the preview to one minute, one second, let's just go off one second for a very quick demonstration. I'm gonna click play. Now after 10 or 15 seconds, I was able to get this preview. Now I can use the slide bar here to compare or I can click this button down here to have them both side by side. However, it's hard to see, this is really sort of shrunk down. So instead of fit, I'm gonna to switch to 100% so I can see what the video looks like at 100%. Now you can see it's not absolutely perfect, but it's definitely uh, a lot sharper and easier to watch at that upscaled size than the original. So now I play to preview. And I think that's gonna be good for our test. I can already see that it smoothed it out quite well. It doesn't look realistic at 100%, but when we watch the full video, once it's done, we'll make our decision then. I'll come down and hit upscale now, and then I wait for the video to go through, which it's actually going through quite quickly, as you can see. It's basically almost half done and I haven't even edited out this wait time. And now that's not too bad. It's definitely cleaned things up and slowed it down really effectively, but it almost looks a little too cleaned up and also a little bit too polished in some of the corners and it just looks not quite right compared to the original, especially when you zoom in. But uh, what also happens if I compare this to the original and the original does look a little bit more authentic, even though it's a lot fuzzier and blurrier, but Maybe we need to make some adjustments. Now I have the final output here. I can double click and come back in to the upscaler. Now I think one of the issues I had was maybe under adjustments. I did play with the sharpness. I'm going to reset that and just try and, try and have the sharpness back where it was because I feel like maybe it was trying to do too much with the details. Adjusting the colors is not gonna have a negative impact based on what we've seen. So I'm gonna leave that all the same. I go back to my upscale options and this time I'm going to try realistic, but I'm also then going to submit versatile, fast, and face enhancement. So we can see which one actually performed the best 
with this AI generated video that's supposed to look real. So let's give that a go and see what results we're able to come up with. Now the realistic video turned out about the same as before where it looks a lot sharper, a lot neater and to watch in full it's not too bad but some of the details do look a little artificial especially if you really focus on the hair that's being lit by the sun and the hair in general has a, a little bit of a fake look to it. Fast didn't really neaten things up as much but that little bit of graininess actually kind of helps a little bit because it just doesn't try too hard to fix up the image and therefore we don't get a lot of that artificial sort of uh, look coming through. It's not perfect, but so far, even though it's not as clean, I do prefer the fast model for this video. The animation model cleans things up even more, but it tends to sort of get a bit of a globby effect on certain objects, especially if you zoom in on sort of some of the hair and especially the background where it's supposed to be blurred out, you get these weird kind of globs and shapes. So again, this is not meant for uh, a video that looks like photorealism, but I thought I'd try it anyway. But versatile so far is my favorite with this particular clip. It's somewhere between fast and realistic in the sense that it doesn't clean things up too much, but it does it a little bit more than fast. And I found that it doesn't have that weird artificial look as much as the realistic model. So this is a pretty solid model for photorealism. Face enhancement does seem to enhance the face a little bit, but we also still get some of that artificial uh, nature coming through. I, I find that it still looks pretty decent, but if you zoom in on the teeth, you get some weird artifacts popping up in there. So once again, I would say that Versatile so far is my absolute favorite, just based off this one single clip. And as a direct comparison, this is the original clip. When we zoom in, you can see how fuzzy that is. I bring the Versatile clip in next to it, and it's a massive difference. But before I dive in and try out a bunch of other clips, I also wanted to mention that you have a timeline down here you can use to essentially edit. So you can drag these corners in and crop, well not so much crop, but shorten the video. So you can remove some of the start, some of the end, and just simply upscale a short portion of a video if that's all you need. So just remember, you have that option if you're looking to shorten a video. But let's start looking at some of these models and seeing how well they work. Starting off with fast, it is obviously a much faster, more lightweight model. So it does tend to render the videos far quicker than the other models, but then you get a much lighter sense of enhancement on your videos. It does a good job of not taking things too far on certain clips, but if you start to work on far more damaged clips that you need things to sort of be repaired or cleaned up with, then you're not gonna get the results you're after. But this is a great lightweight upscaler if you've got somewhat decent quality footage that you want to bring up to say 4k or even up to 1080p if you're working with something even smaller so that would be my recommendation for fast when using this program but coming back to this comparison here the fast model looks much the same as the original just a little smoother we add in the realistic model and you can see how much things have been improved here it hasn't overcooked this particular image and the footage looks pretty decent. So how well does realistic perform on other videos? It does seem obvious that this is intended for more realistic footage. So you obviously want to try things like photorealistic footage. You, I think you want a little bit of resolution to already be in there because when the resolution is a little too low, I think it tries too hard to clean it up and you do get some of the more fake looking artifacts in your footage. However, I would still recommend trying previewing to make sure you're getting what you need, but this is really a great uh, model if you've got something like a 1080p video or a 2k video that you want to make 4k. So that's kind of my recommendation when it comes to the realistic model is one, make it realistic, uh, so photorealistic footage, and two, make sure you've already got a fair bit of detail in there so that it doesn't over smooth it. Now that brings us to the animation model. Now obviously this is intended for things like 3D animation or even 2D animation, but it is the most aggressive when it comes to really cleaning things up. Like I mentioned with that other video, we've got some little globby artifacts, but as long as you pick the right type of video, so you definitely want to test this out, quite often you get some pretty nice results. This old Popeye video turned out pretty good. And this other more realistic video didn't turn out quite so good. So you need to make sure you're actually sticking to animation and trying these things out to see which model is gonna be the best. But that leads me on to Versatile. And this is definitely my favorite model so far, but it does take a lot longer to render your videos, but it finds the balance between cleaning up your video and keeping some of the texture. As you can see here with the woman's face, it's cleaned up things just as much as the realistic, but the texture is still there on the cheek. I think that's a really nice balance. 
I would say that in most instances, you're gonna be using Versatile to get the best results. But if you're looking to work on faces, there is also a face enhancement model. Now I have this old footage of me, and if you zoom in, you can see the footage is pretty grainy. But I add in the face replacement model footage and it does clean up a fair bit. It still has a bit of a jagged edge and looks a little bit sort of untidy, but it's not bad. But looking at some of these other examples, you'll notice that everything is pretty razor sharp. This one here, every single detail is a little bit over sharp actually. The pores look quite fake due to the fact they're kind of all jaggedy, look almost more like frozen ice. This video here I think actually turned out the best and even if I compare it to some of the previous upscales we did with Nero, I think this is actually one of the better ones. And of course, moving on to this video, this one hasn't really had much to work with and it's done an okay job, but doesn't look 100%. I think this goes to show that every individual video will have a model that's best for it and there's no universally best model for you to choose from. But how does it compare to Topaz Video AI or even Topaz Astra? Well, the first thing I want to mention is that this program works entirely locally. So everything is actually done on your local computer, not in the cloud. So a lot of people will find that that is a great thing because they are, a lot of people are kind of sick of the subscription model. So that's one benefit. But that's also a weakness in that if your computer isn't very powerful and it takes a long time, you can't just send it to the cloud. So you actually need to make sure this is going to work for you on your system and that you have a computer powerful enough to actually go through and make these upscales. Now comparing to Topaz Video AI, it is cheaper, unless you sign up for Astral, which is a monthly subscription. But the Topaz programs are a fair bit more expensive than this Nero upscaler. So if you're looking to only use the options it has as opposed to the generative upscalers, then you can actually pay a little bit less and use Nero instead. This is perfect for home videos or taking 1080p footage up to say 4K. Now Topaz Astro is entirely on the cloud and is a generative upscaler. So that's a completely separate sort of comparison to make because we don't have a generative upscaler with this Nero upscaler, something that adds more detail. So it doesn't really compare to Astro. They're basically two completely different ends of the spectrum when it comes to video upscaling. Topaz Video AI does have Starlight, which is a generative upscaler. It also has the option to, to process either locally or on the cloud. But uh, because we don't have a generative upscaler here with the Nero upscaler, that is one area where it simply cannot compete with Topaz Video or especially Topaz Astra. It can't get that regenerated level of detail to smooth out things, especially if you're converting an AI video into an upscale video. However, a lot of the more standard upscale models are very similar. I'm gonna compare a few of them so we can take a look. Now this is old footage of me that I upscaled using the versatile upscaler in Nero. I compare it to Proteus, which is the kind of like all purpose from Topaz Video AI. And Proteus does look a little bit smoother, but you can see how versatile competes, especially for the price. I would say the hair is probably the most notable thing that's better on Proteus, but otherwise I think these are both pretty solid considering that the original footage was a little grainy. And as we move on to Iris, which is a face model, you'll see that again, it's just a bit smoother and a little bit of an improvement. But as we go through and check out some of the other models, we have Rhea, again, this is an advanced 4X upscaler, looks a little bit sharper again. Artemis, it sort of denoises and sharpens. And Gaia, we have a more of a high quality animation style sort of model. And Thea, which is a more advanced high fidelity model. They all do look a little bit better from Topaz. But just remember, you're paying more than triple the price for these models. So is it really that much better for the price? This depends on your budget and what you need these videos to do for you. So when it comes to Nero versus Topaz, you're looking at price versus quality. Nero is far more accessible. The names of the models are also much easier to understand. But Topaz has higher quality and it also has the generative uh, upscalers as well. So if you need far more advanced upscaling for commercial projects or something that really needs to look its best, Paying the extra for Topaz is where you want to go. But for the average person wanting to upscale some home footage or maybe even just slightly upscale an AI video, Nero's upscale is going to be a pretty good solution for the budget conscious. But if you want to try out this video upscaler for yourself, there is a link in the description below and you can check that out. Otherwise, let me know based off what you've seen, what your thoughts are. Does this upscaler do the job or should we simply move on? Let me know in the comments. Otherwise, that is the video for today, guys. I hope you found it useful. And if you did, please consider giving the video a like. And I hope to see you again soon. Have a great day and thanks for watching.